Thank you, John, for facilitating. Amy, thank you so much for attending and, and participating in such an open uh, way as you did. Next, we'll hear from Narek Viridian, who is the CTO of Globo. If you are unfamiliar with Globo, they're one of the world's leading uh, multi-category delivery apps, uh, premium delivery platform operating in 25 countries, uh, a complicated multi-sided platform business that connects the consumers to the, the producers. It could be restaurants, grocery stores, pharmacies, et cetera, uh, but also couriers and brands. So you have a, a four-sided uh, marketplace, which obviously puts quite a bit of stress and complexity into their data platform. So this talk will explore how Globo has moved towards a data mesh approach and not just the technology aspects, but looking at the inner team challenges, the prioritization challenges, the complexity of uh, centralized data teams adopting this uh, autonomous domain-driven data product mindset uh, and, and how the platform team was able to create self-service capabilities for others to consume. Uh, so uh, let's welcome uh, Narek, thank you. Hello and Welcome to this talk about a data mesh and global in our um, experience so far together. My name is Narek Verdian and I'm the CTO here at Global. I lead uh, engineering, data, IT and security. Our tech team is uh, primarily based in, in Spain between Barcelona and Madrid, but we also have a tech hub in Warsaw in um, Poland and we have a uh, tech hub in Kiev in Ukraine as well. My background, um, having worked at uh, a lot of B2C um, companies, you know, I used to work at matchmaking and travel at hotels.com, uh, Expedia, VRPA, um, has always been focused on um, experimentation, learning, personalization, and has, of, that is, of, of course, uh, primarily, uh, you know, using, using data. Um, so I've always had a keen interest on how data platforms can, can scale to support it. I've been here at Glova about uh, just over a year, and our experience with data mesh is roughly about 10 to 11 months old. Um, however, we've come, we're coming to a point now where uh, we're starting to see data products being built and, and, and the community getting um, pretty happy uh, about that. What is Global? So Global is a multi-category delivery platform. We operate in about 25 countries right now in Europe, Western Central Asia and uh, across Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, we started in 2015, Global started in 2015 with a multi-category really in a DNA. Right? We have uh, this uh, in the middle on the left, you can see anything. While we support food, gifts, pharmacy, groceries, you know, the Glo uh, Global Express does the 10 to 15 minute rapid grocery, grocery delivery. But anything is uh, where you can go and type literally anything that you would like us to fetch and then our logistics and operations team behind the scenes will figure out um, where we can uh, find that and deliver to you. And like I said, we operate in 25 countries and they are super diverse. Um, and um, that always adds another level of dimension of difficulty to uh, when you deal with data. So uh, there are really three things I would say that drive complexity of the platform and complexity of data when it comes to platform. One is the multi-category aspect, right? It involves different thinking and different integrations, management of logistics, but also when it comes to data, data itself is represented differently. Um, so that's the first one. Secondly, it's the, like I said, the diverse set of countries that um, we operate in complexity of languages, local behaviors. Um, I recently was on a trip to, our, to see our operations in Kenya and they, you couldn't really compare. Yes, the app is the same. Um, the experience is the same amazing global experience, but when it comes to how it's, uh, it's working down in a, on the ground, uh, logistics and, and operations and data, it couldn't be more different and our platform has to be able to support it. And the third one um, is the fact that we are really a four-sided marketplace. We have customers, obviously, that use Global um, day in, day out. 
um, on one side. On the other side, we have partners that we integrate with or they, they um, add their inventory to Glow. And we have advertisers. This is a combination of same partners who would like to push um, uh, create more awareness about their, their products. And we also have uh, brands, uh, the big brands that would like to do the same, create, uh, be top of mind in front of our customers. And lastly, is couriers without who our marketplace simply doesn't work. They are that me, they're that the link, obviously connecting customers, uh, customers to uh, partners. So this is a game of continuous uh, optimization, uh, continuously uh, figuring out what are the best way of creating shared value for all participants of our marketplace. And we have to continuously be on top, on top of metrics like reliability, efficiency, profitability, and, 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 and so on. And that really requires a high level of um, high quality and, and trustworthy data. So Global grew uh, very rapidly. Uh, we've been in hyper growth for quite some time, growing double digit percentage year over year. Um, and uh, like I said, because it's such a complex marketplace, we right now have data roles across all our business units. You know, we have data obviously in the data team, but we also have data in growth marketing and quick commerce, in engineering, obviously, and an international team, food innovations, HR, public affairs, and data community is really widespread in a, in, in a company. So why? Did we have to change things around? Um, the, 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 the problem stems from the fact that, yes, Grover grew very quickly. Data was dispersed everywhere. Every uh, little data team in different units would, would, would do their own data analysis, uh, automatically data, but there wasn't really a universal uh, quality bar or universal um, easy way of accessing the data. The platform for Global grew as as a monolith right which makes sense for a startup like uh, ours in the beginning where there was a service connected to the app then there were more features more features and the app grew very rapidly and now we have been going through an exercise of um splitting the, our, our big monolith into different macro services but also micro services so this has already been in progress for the last year or two. Now we're accelerating even further because we are we are in a need to, to be able to support multiple different verticals of, of delivery, right? And um, create an environment for our hundreds of engineers to be able to operate without any blockers, any delays. But at the, at the same time, um, the way um, data worked at Glovo you know, on one side, you had all the operational data, all the databases that, that we used uh, for applications and services. And then on the, on the, on the right-hand side, we had the, um, and we still have the analytical, you know, big data space, right? And it's the data lakes and data warehouse. And this might be a cliche, but, but really our data engineering was stuck in the middle. There have been the bottlenecks, um, essentially, for the rest of the organization, the way we worked. What are some of the range of issues uh, that we might face? Lack of trustworthy data, right? That um, you go, you'd go into meetings and there would be lots of arg arguments, um, you know, uh, one way or another, whether people trust the data or not. And this is really, um, this, uh, this is a trait that I have seen, and I'm pretty sure that you, um, you, you might have seen in, in other companies as well. Big issue with quality generally, questionable availability. Sometimes it would <clears throat> be fresh, and sometimes it wouldn't be fresh. Be misalignment of ownership, especially when it comes to whether you look at delivering a vertical slices of an application, horizontal slices, or, or what. Super difficult to discover what data sets exist, uh, exist already multiple different domains uh, developing a very uh, similar uh, data products or data sets, um, I, have to, I have to say. And generally, really data engineering being at uh, the receiving end of all of those, um, all of those problems, you know, 
they, they were responsible for building all the data pipelines, doing the transformation from operational to analytical data. Um, and uh, every new ask for a feature or service would really need to touch uh, multiple, multiple different teams. So we had to ask ourselves a question, right? What happens if we continue operating this way? Yes, we could put more engineers, we could put more process, we could create lots of councils and gover governance boards. But um, essentially, if we continued in the same way, we could basically be flying blind. Obviously, for any company of our size, we spend a lot of money in marketing. Uh, we, uh, you know, we have promotions, we have we just generally want to understand the health of our marketplace. And if we don't have high quality data, then we would be flying blind. And that's one. Um, we make decisions all the time. We make investment decisions, whether we invest in one country, uh, the other country, one product, one service or not. And without high quality data, that's simply impossible. Third, um, I think there was, it was definitely visible that different teams within global would start losing trust in data and in the data roles um, and that was becoming um, a huge issue and we started to um, you know see that our talent got frustrated with this setup um, and essentially if we continued this way we would see the business grow stifle so what we decided to do is partner with thoughtworks we had we already had an operation um, engagement with ThoughtWorks where, where we had a number of um, different initiatives where ThoughtWorks participated in at Global. And we decided to uh, partner, uh, put together a great um, <clears throat> group of talent between ThoughtWorks and Global who would uh, drive an initiative to understand, uh, just dive into data strategy and what is it and how we're going and where we'd like to be. Um, the team sat down um, with uh, executives all the way from executives to beta uh, engineers and software engineers and product managers to figure figure out where we are um, and where it'd like to be when you look <clears throat> three years on obviously uh, paints an amazing picture everybody would really love to be there but when we focused on um, the issues of the day i'm pretty sure that many of you might be familiar with this i think your current role or, or before but lots of problems with data governance uh, impossible to certain things, impossible to scale, uh, poor lead time, uh, well, to tooling being very di difficult, and then data ownership being um, completely in a in a bad place. But my favorite was basically just trying to understand what the architecture is um, and um, how we operate from an architecture perspective. And if you look close enough, you can actually see the resemblance of again. Uh, the traditional operational data plane, uh, plane analytical data plane, and, and uh, things mashed together. Right. So after uh, a number of weeks of deep dive and discussion, um, you know, to, to to support global and to support our microservices strategy from an overall architecture uh, perspective, we decided that um, you know data mesh was actually good for us. Why? Because A, <clears throat> while already in global, um, there was a strong decentralized business ownership. Um, they also had their own data teams in different business units. We didn't really think about decentralized data ownership. And I, you know, in, in our setup, that, that would really uh, make, make a, a great deal of sense. Secondly, um, global is a very you know, product-centric organization supporting different participants of, of our, our marketplace. And I think it just made sense to start thinking about data as a product as well. Um, we needed to invest in our platforms. And instead of investing in an existing platform, it just made, made, made sense to think about how can we create better central self-service platform to be able to scale data in a decentralized way um, much uh, more rapidly and with higher degree of confidence. And lastly, we needed some sort of a freedom within a framework approach to be able to um, ensure data um, is uh, fresh, high quality, uh, fulfills SLAs and SLOs 
and that consumers of the data could trust. And I think the concept of federated governance within data mesh um, made sense. And that's um, that's why we decided that data mesh was good for us. And we started uh, putting together an um, like an enablement team to start thinking about how we, we go about it at Global. I think the first, um, uh, you know, big change that had to happen, you know, like Jean-Marc, I've um, heard Jean-Marc mention a number of times, it has to be the shift of thinking that um, data is just not tables anymore. Um, it's, uh, it's the data, it's the code that maintains it, um, it's the metadata, it's the infrastructure that um, goes, uh, goes with it. And it has to fulfill uh, adhere to a set of rules and exhibit set of traits that that make it fit the right um, intersection of uh, usability, um, feasibility, and, and and value for uh, consumers of the data product to really uh, want to use it and, and trust it. So I think the first biggest change in the company had to be uh, around this. Um, it, it's it's not hundred percent rolled out. It's, as, as I say, we were still between the two worlds, but as we start building new data products, um, it's uh, this way of thinking is, is gaining bigger and bigger momentum within, within Global. Secondly, we needed to, obviously you cannot just go and tell everyone to build data products if the, if, if the platform isn't ready. So we had to think about prioritizing. We looked at um, some of the most impactful metrics uh, within Global, uh, taking into account the interdependencies and defined which one should go first, um, which one should we experiment with essentially, and with this thin slicing mindset. And the most meaningful one to start with, uh, I think this probably you, not unique to us. Um, it would, it would. Uh, probably be the same in many different com companies, but for us, one of the uh, first one was co co conversion. So customer behavior, um, data product that would, that would feed co conversion as, as, a, uh, as a data product. But when you start thinking about thin, slice, um, thin slicing, it's not you know, in, in a data mesh in, a, in this new world, we have to tackle all these problems at the same time. It's not about creating a data product and then retrospectively thinking, oh, we need to put data governance on top of it, or we need to think about the data platform that supports it. Now, actually, we had to go through the entire thin slice as we build the first data, data product, think about A, we need certain pieces in the data platform to support it. B, um, we need um, to understand how this data will be governed um, and so on and so forth. So. Um, for example, um, as we started thinking about the data platform, uh, obviously we needed to start uh, provide ability uh, for data ingestion, data processing, security policies, monitoring, uh, being able to provide ways of accessing the data. Um, and those, those, these are really the core building blocks of data mesh platform. I mentioned that we started our journey maybe 10, 11 months ago, and the vast majority of the time, was the uh, the part of building data platform itself uh, in, in a new way to be able to be able to support uh, creation of the first data product at global um so we defined our um our plan or business case around uh, you know building this first uh, data product customer behavior it's essentially a complete version of the app conversion funnel that enables the stakeholders the ability to analyze, understand the customer journey. We thought take two, one to two quarters. And um, we crack, cracked on with it. But like I said, we had to tackle a number of different things uh, you know, as, as we developed the first data product. Not only uh, the platform, but also the way we're organized and where do different data uh, data roles live and what sort of data teams have data embedded in them. And one of the uh, first definitions we made is we defined, um, you know, what we call the embedded teams, like the product team, like the platform teams, and also enablement, uh, enablement teams. So uh, when we have embedded teams, they 
uh, the data models or models they produce are only consumed by their by their own team. Right? Um, these teams have product analysts, data engineers, and data scientists. But once they get to the point where uh, if those data products that have been produced are, are like the significance of those increase and they have to stick around for the longer term, then we have to switch about uh, think about creating um, uh, transforming them into data products to benefit uh, benefit the platform. Then we have data product teams where the data products that are uh, produced are consumed by multiple areas and obviously they require a higher degree of quality, robustness and performance. And those teams have data product managers, data analysts, data engineers, and data scientists. Um, the third type of team is data product, uh, data platform product teams. And they are essentially there to build the capabilities of the central data platform that everyone else depends upon. And they have data platform um, product manager, uh, data platform engineers, machine learning platform engineers, and software engineers. And lastly, we have enablement teams who are really there to um, deliver turnkey data products, help build capabilities, um, and uh, driving knowledge uh, share, uh, sharing. And that team consists of project managers, data analysts, data engineers, um, software engineers, and, and others. Those are more like uh, specific, uh, specific cases. So I covered the team aspect. Yes, we had to go through a big, um, in terms of reorganization of how um, how our engineering data products um, and what broader business work together. There are some um, reporting line alignments uh, and what have you. But um, um, that was the um, one of the things we had to take care. And second one is thinking about uh, this federated governance, right? I think I, I like to think about it as uh, freedom within the framework. We want to support the decentralization, but we also want to provide domains with self-sovereignty and being able to take uh, kind of define and adhere to the uh, to the level of data um, quality of the data they produce however not doing this so much via manual processes and policy but actually think about uh, computational federated governance which is centrally providing uh, providing uh, tools and, and, and processes to be able to, tools and um, capabilities to be able to support it. So a number of months later, um, I'm super delighted that um, our first, second, uh, and more um, data product uh, is, is live. It's essentially a customer behavior that then feeds into uh, customer uh, conversion metrics. And, um, you know, at Global, uh, essentially the idea is that the, the data product uh, is uh, possible. You know, the consumers of the data product can access it by a variety of different means, whether it's streaming or query language or data visualization tools like Looker. Um, it, 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 it took some time, you know, um, I mentioned uh, that there, there is lots to, to take care of, but I think that once you deliver the, your first data product, then you have a lot of the fundamental building blocks to be able to go and accelerate, accelerate the, um, further the others. So what are um, some of the focus areas going forward? Number one, um, we are building a data product catalog that uh, we will continuously prioritize and make sure uh, you know, we deliver over the next two years. Obviously that's based on the business and value prioritization, considering dependencies, which one has to be developed first before we're able to develop the next one. Third is evolving continuously our team structure to get to that North Star um, team structure that we've defined by end of 2022. Um, and then push on data mesh adoption in a broader business. Really, I think the big aspect um, to focus on here is um, not only within uh, tech, but also outside of tech. We currently have many, many data, many data teams, and we hope to get to the point by end of this year where we can empower those teams to define data products, to own data products, and take care um, in, a, in a decentralized way of, of governance uh, of, of those data sets. Some challenges, takeaways, you know, I think I'm just going to mention three. 
I'm happy to take any questions if they come up later. But number one is the fight between balancing with you know uh, the firefighting that we have to do now to support the business growth versus the new platform approach. And really, we managed to overtake uh, overcome that by, by ring fencing, um, uh, creating a team that's just focused on 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 a new building the new data mesh platform. Secondly, it is it is new, right? It's um, it's the knowledge awareness, and I think um, the leaders that we have in data they've been pretty good in continuously sharing knowledge. Uh, little videos just explaining uh, the data mesh community within global uh, what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how things work. And there's obviously high expectations from from the leadership team, from the executive team, um, because all we discuss in executive executive team every day is is uh, facts and hypotheses based on the data we have, and and uh, the expectation is that uh, as we go further into data mesh, we will um, debate less about the accuracy of data and more about you know, focusing on making decisions. And it has to be one step at a time. It's new, it's unknown. Um, I'm, I'm seeing now every day new blog posts, new talks come up about data mesh, and I think that's helping the community to evolve. But really, we're still in early, early stages, and we have to take one step at a time and experiment and make sure that uh, we learn from it and go, go forward. Thank you very much. I hope you found that useful. Um, and um, thanks for listening. <laughs>